So the, I think I got overwhelmed this week for the first time, and I've been doing this for a good couple of years now. It came to a head? Yeah, it did, actually. Uh, and I think um, I got very angry. I've been very calm over the years, and I've managed to stay... Who were you angry with? Um, I'm angry with the state and I'm angry with the church. The collusion that happened that created this absolute horror, but not just that, the fact that it was tried to be hidden, tried to keep secret, tried to pretend it didn't happen. That's the most offensive thing to survivors, not to be believed. And for people to give those testimonies and then say there is no evidence of in these testimonies is a re-traumatising of people. That's what someone wrote to me today. She said, all of my testimony has changed. She said, it's taken out of context. It's, it's, it, it doesn't match what I, what I wanted to say. And she said, it's a re-traumatising of me. And I thought, that's it. Mm. And it's, it's, you can't, you know, the, to do that to people, it's inhuman. We've already been traumatised by what's happened to us and our treatment in terms of searching for our identities, women searching, mothers searching for their babies, sisters, brothers in, in, in mass graves. I've spent from 2002 until the end of 2019 trying to get basic information to close my story because my beginning, we have a beginning, a middle and an end. The beginning of my life was taken from me. That my birth was obliterated or attempted to be obliterated. And it has taken me that long to, to get the full picture. And I only managed that by, you know, arguing with Tusla, the Southern Health Board, all of the, the church, everybody. The only way I got closure in the end was to go down the DNA route. That's what I was pushed to.